Gal. Hey guys, and welcome to Galp. It's your boy, Bish. I'm back. It's me. I'm back, and today we're going to be talking about a couple of games that I've been playing recently. A couple of Koei games. Ooh. A couple of Koei games. Ooh. That I've been playing recently. You might know them as Wolong Fallen Dynasty and Wild Hearts. Both fantastic games made by Koei. Before we get into the discussion, before we get into our thoughts, I just want to thank our sponsors, Sugoi Mark and Crunchyroll. Both amazing sponsors. We love them. You'll be hearing ads for them later on in the show. But yeah, there'll, there'll probably just be one ad break today. We're going to go through Wolong after the break. Before the break, we're going to be talking about Wild Hearts. And I just want to shout out EA for providing us with a review code for this. So big thanks to EA. I didn't actually expect it. The way it happened, EA reached out to me, which was very surprising. They don't normally do that, but I think probably they they must have seen our content and we were talking about Wild Hearts in the previous episode. They caught up on that and they're like, would you like a code for Wild Hearts? And I was like, yes, I would love one. I was actually going to buy the game and then they reached out with a code day one. So thank you, EA, for that. I was playing this game on the PlayStation 5. I really would have wanted to play it on the Xbox because my PS5 is like at capacity at the moment and I don't want to delete any games. But... You know, instead, I ended up buying an SSD for my PS5. So I got an external. No, I got an internal SSD. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. The game is not that big, though. It's about 40 gigabytes, which is actually quite surprising, considering Tokiden was the same size. I was like, what? Tokiden 2, at least. I'm speaking a lot about Tokiden 2 because it's made by the same people. Omega Force, which is, as you know, they made Tokiden. They also made Shin Sangoku Muso. Dynasty Warriors, as well as Samurai Warriors. So it's a studio that's been going on for like more than 30 years now. They know what they're doing when it comes to games design and games development. This is part of the EA Originals. Koei and EA had partnered up for this game. So EA is publishing it, developed by Koei Tecmo. It's basically a new Tokiden game. You're like, what? For those that haven't played it, Tokiden is in, was a new IP for Koei back in the day, back in the Vita, back in the days of the PlayStation Vita. It was huge because there was no monster hunting style game. Uh, so no monster hunter on the PlayStation Vita. And Koei decided we're going to swoop in and we're going to make one. And so they did. They made a monster hunting style game in Japan. I believe it was set in Japan. Had that sort of Japanese eth- uh, aesthetic, had that Japanese aesthetic with yokai and oni and things like that. So which was cool. You were hunting down, you know, traditional Japanese demons, almost. Ones that, were, you know, existed in, you know, Shintoism and in, you know, Japanese lore and fairy tales almost. So that was pretty cool. We then got a second Tokiden game. Didn't do so well. And I think probably because at that point we'd got in new Monster Hunter games. The Vita had sort of died down at that point. They released it on the PS4. It just missed a lot. And I think one of the reasons that game didn't do so well was because there wasn't as many people playing online because you know what? If you had a PlayStation Vita, online play was free. I don't know what the logistics are in terms of getting online play for free on the PS4 because I know some games are able to do it. Um, I think it's got to do with PlayStation Plus sales and whether or not they get like a cut from it. Um, like as in the publisher gets like a cut of PlayStation Plus sales and all that kind of stuff. I don't know how that works, but it works somehow. And I don't know if it's something that they can opt out of. Uh, I presume it is, but I'm not sure. Anyway, the reason why this is pertinent is because a game like Tokiden really centered around online play, but you could still play the game offline. And it's the same with Wild Hearts. You can play the game offline in your own leisure. However, I do feel that the game really sort of engages online play a lot more it rewards online play a lot more the game is a lot easier online i've noticed that when you're fighting monsters the monsters have the same level of difficulty so you would imagine that the more players that you have the increased level of difficulty gets added um that's not the case the level of difficulty remains the same whether you have four players fighting or just one. So it really favors online play. In addition to that, there's so much more that you can get done with online multiplayer. You have people that can visit your town. It's that town that doesn't have any kimono. You don't actually fight in that town. It's mainly there to serve as a hub. And you'll get people that visit your town from time to time requesting that you 
defeat a kimono for that i believe this is generated by the game using real online players names and accounts and things like that i don't think that they can actually put out a request themselves i don't think it necessarily works like that the reason i say this is because once you go and take one of their requests no one else can join your party at that point and if they do they kind of get kicked out so it's something that i believe that the the game generates these little tasks for you there's a lot of content in this game and there's a lot of emphasis on online play it can also hinder it a little bit when i first started and i had a conversation with jacob because i got the game and i was like jacob you need to get this game it's fucking amazing it's, it's great and i sold it to him and i was like you need it he went out and bought it and he raised up some really good points and i didn't necessarily understand this from the beginning but after playing it for a while i really agree with him there is a level of difficulty in this game that is really harsh towards new players and he made the point that if you need because i was saying to him i was like well it gets easier with online play blah, blah, blah. if you need online play to sell your game then clearly you've done something wrong as great as this game is it's heavily dependent on online play which is unfortunate because sometimes like i said in tokiden you just want to go out and hunt monsters by yourself you do have this little robot thing i can't remember the the name i think it's called sukimoto i can't remember the name of it but i named mine miki m-i-k-i i don't know why i thought it would be a cute name because you can rename them and you can level them up and they basically if you're playing solo they assist you in terms of your fights with the kimono they can distract enemies they can <clears throat> provide healing in form of incense they can give you threads which is the building blocks that are needed to create these wonderful creations that you can use in kimono fights and they can attack as well i didn't know that but they they are able to attack very interesting stuff but that's not really sufficient for offline play i would have liked it if you could fight with npcs kind of like what tokiden did and at least Tokiden 2 and even Tokiden 1 did this, where if you're playing main story missions, you can choose to bring the NPCs with you. The game does have NPCs and I've seen them fight. So it's not unusual that you can help them. I would like the fa I would like for NPCs to be able to help you if you're doing offline play. That would be quite nice. If not NPCs, I think what would be cool would be clones of your friends right so if you have friends that also play this game maybe have like shadow versions of them that come and help you kind of learn from their play style a little bit and have them you know help you in battle that would be cool there is an option by default and um, which i always turn on anyway because this game like i mentioned it's not really designed for single player play it's incredibly difficult for single player play and it's incredibly boring the game is designed for multiplayer play i always set my game to automatically seek out players even if i'm playing story mode to help and assist with a battle in addition to that if i want to grind and get items specifically kimono parts or monster parts i will go in and join another player session very easily actually and this is what i love is that you can go to any kimono because it'll be on your overall world map you can click any kimono and just search for anyone that is also currently fighting that kimono or anyone that has asked for help in fighting that kimono and you can join and it's fantastic because you get to meet a lot of people most of the time at least when i'm playing i'm based in the uk or in europe i play at night time um and especially on the weekends so I tend to be matched up with players in Asia, Korean people, uh, Japanese people. It's difficult though, I will say sometimes because language barriers and things like that. I can't speak Korean. I can speak a little bit of Japanese enough to get me by, but a lot of players can't. And I've been speaking to a lot of American players, a lot of British players, um, some German players as well. And I've spoken to them and they said, one thing I don't like about this game is that I can't really pair with people in my own region. There is an option to, to set it by language, um, which can be a bit annoying because if you set it by language as opposed to set by region, because there is no option to set by region. If you set it by language, if your game's language is set to German, it will only search for other players who've also set their language to German. Same with English. And that can cause a little bit of a problem because there is a lot of European players that can speak English, but they choose to play the game in their own language, but they would still like to play with other players who they can communicate with, right? 
even if it is through a second language. So there should be an option. And this is something that I think COVID can implement easily. There could be an option in which they can add um, to search by region, Europe, North America, Asia. That would be really nice. But I think one of the reasons why people are sort of complaining, at least from what I can see, is because, well, the times that they're playing and the fact that they're just far more uh, players in in Japan at the moment. I go in and I type in Wild Hearts on YouTube or on Twitch. It's mostly Japanese streamers, content creators playing this game, which is great. It's fun. You know, I've met a lot of people. I met some VTubers as well. I've joined in on a couple of their streams unknowingly. There was one person I was playing with. I can't I can't remember their name, but they were really cool. During online play, they were speaking Japanese and they were speaking to themselves. They were like giving out instructions in Japanese and they're like, go there, go there, jump on top of here. And I think after a while they realized that I wasn't Japanese. And then they were like, oh, revive me, revive me. And then um, I revived them, said, there you go. I think, I can't remember what I said. I said, dozo, or something like that. I can't remember what I said. And then they were they were just like surprised by it. I think that was pretty cool. It's just the interaction with fans. Why am I talking about this point specifically? It's very important because Toki Den didn't have inter-region play, which was really weird. Because of the, the way that the game was set up, the Japanese copy of the game was technically listed as a different game on the PlayStation Store to the copy that we got in the West, the international version. Only people with that Japanese version of the game could play with Japanese players and only people with the international version could play with international players and you, there was no crossover which was a bit unfortunate but this game has that you can do that and it's great and i love that i don't actually have a problem with it i think it's very great one thing i do have a problem with is the fact that initially when i was playing this game i didn't have playstation plus for the first five days of the game's release before like a patch came out i was playing the game online with people for free and it got patched and it made me get really upset. Why? This was actually going to be a point of praise towards EA, assuming that they had opted out of the PlayStation Plus thing and just decided, we'll let our players play for free. Because they, I don't know whether or not they can do that, but I think they could. And then I ended up paying PlayStation Plus for it. I bought a year of PlayStation Plus to play, which it's not unusual because I would have done it anyway to play other games, but it kind of upset me a little bit because you gave it to me for free and you took it away. EA. I think considering that the game is very dependent on online multiplayer, it would have been nice to see them turn off the need for PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live. That would have been nice to see because I think in a few months time, not even in a few years, I think in a few months time, we're going to see this game sort of decline a lot more. It's same thing happened with Tokinet. Same thing happened with Tokinet 2 a lot quicker. I think that there is a lot of things that fans of the original Tokiden wouldn't necessarily like about this game. For example, there is no health bars for the monsters. You don't really get an indication of when the monsters are defeated, which is very bad. At least for me, I was very confused because I was like, oh, I'm fighting this thing for like a half an hour. How do I even know it's anywhere near defeated or if it's recovering health or if it could do that? I didn't know. There is certain signs when you're looking at the kimono, like it will start to limp and its attack patterns will, will be very different. It would Sometimes it will move from one location to another. It sort of changes it up a little bit. Because in Tokiden, when you were fighting a, an Oni in Tokiden, you were just in one place. But what I liked about it was that it was a lot more simpler in Tokiden. You could see where the weaknesses were. You had a health bar to look at. It was very clear where you needed to attack, when to attack, and what weapons you could use to attack. Wild Hearts doesn't give you that information. What it does do is that there'll be certain parts on the kimono that will glow blue and you will attack that. That's their weaknesses. It's also the points that you need to attack so that you can get certain drops. In Tokiden, I believe they would flash red if you want to get a horns or a tail or fangs, but it was a lot easier to spot. I was speaking to a gentleman, I can't remember, I believe his name was Ray. A really nice guy, I can't remember, I think he's from Ohio. I can't, is he from Ohio? I can't remember where he's from, no, is he? I thought he was from New Jersey, but apparently he's from like Ohio. So yeah, I met Ray from Ohio in the game and we were talking about it and he had happened to be a Monster Hunter player. And he was like, well, I, I picked up this game because, you know, I would thought it would be, you know, a bit like Monster Hunter. And he's, he described this game as Monster Hunter cross Fortnite, which was interesting because I got that vibe as well. Because in this game, you do build 
with things called thread, which act as your building blocks. You can chop down trees, you can mine stones or rocks to get threads. And as you level up, you have more threads that you can hold and you can do these different combinations. You can build walls with crates, you can create hammers with springs, you know, you could uh, create torches that as soon as you go near them, you your weapon will be imbued with fire. You have a lot, but it's also tied into your progression within the game. The game has an immense skill tree, which you can unlock with these things called kimono orbs, which you do get when fighting kimono. It's insane. Genuinely, it's insane. The amount of content that's in this game. And there's a thing that comes up sometimes where it's like, hey, you need to get inspiration on a certain battle to unlock this. And it will tell you what you need to have in your inventory, like which which things you can build. And then in, in the fight, depending on how far along, usually it's when, you know, the kimono is badly damaged. You'll basically use this move to finish them off. You can unlock the combination or fusion kakekuri, I believe is kake, kakerui, I think is the name. I can't remember the name. Kakegurui is, it? <laughs> is what I was going to say. You can do fusions with them and... You can create all sorts. I've seen people create like massive crossbows, incense burners that kind of heal you as you play. Really, really useful things. And that's the beauty of it because you can play the game however you want. You can suit the Kakerui with your own play style. You can choose what weapons you want to use. And mind you, if you wanted to go through and for example, if you didn't use the crates as much, and you didn't really care about the strength of the crates, you can completely sidestep that in the skill tree and go for something else. If you wanted to enhance your other kakeruis, like your more advanced ones, the game has simple kakeruis, fusions, and the more advanced ones, which you kind of use in your camps, like setting up a tent, setting up a drying racks, barrels for fermentation, and for things like that as well. You can set up like a mining quarters that creates, uh, that generates ore for you. There's all this kind of stuff within Wild Hearts, and I think that's really cool. You, you don't need it, but it is very useful because when you ferment items, when you dry food, and food is very important as well because it doesn't necessarily heal you, but it gives you buffs. So it will give you overall health bonuses, attack bonuses, defense, speed, that kind of stuff. Evasion bonuses as well. If you want to heal, you use these things called healing water. Also, that increases the, num the number of healing water that you can hold increases as you level up as well and also through the skill tree but you can avoid that if you don't need it you don't need it i personally use it for every fight because i suck and because the game is difficult <coughs> there is something very interesting about um the way that combat works in this game like i mentioned it is very reminiscent to toki den uh, in terms of combat you know you use square for light attacks triangle for charge attacks it's pretty simple. If you've played a game like Tokiden or if you've played a game like Dynasty Warriors, you will know how to play this game. Mechanics with the Kake Ruiz is very interesting because like I mentioned, you can build hammers that just bonk the enemy on the head. You can build these massive crossbows that just like shoot at them. You can get really strategic with it and you can work with your friends to do some very interesting things. Like I was playing with some party members as well. We all set up walls just to confuse the enemy and then so that they couldn't turn. So we all set up, we boxed the enemy in basically until they destroyed a wall. Then we built up another wall. It was kind of game breaking, but you could do some insane shit. Even combining that with your more advanced Kakirui and the advanced ones basically allow you to affect the environment around you. So you can get these ones that are like wind tunnels or like wind machines that can lift you up and that can help you in battle as well, uh, get you elevated. You can use these zip lines that are fantastic. I really love them because it can get you from A to B very quickly. It also allows you to ambush kimonos. So like if you're going on the zip line and you see a kimono underneath you, you can let go, release the zip line and just attack the enemy there and deal a lot of damage that way oh and another thing i didn't realize initially because the game doesn't really explain this to you but you can use the zip line both ways when i visit a lot of players um worlds they set up two zip lines because they don't realize that you can use the, zip, the same zip line twice in both directions 
you can do that. So don't set up more than one zip line in the same area because you're wasting resources. Oh, and that's another thing. You have this thing called uh, dragon pits. You find them around and they allow you to use the land's natural resources to build those takiruis, whether you want to build a camp, whether you want to build these zip lines. They're the most useful things for me at the moment in the game or whether you want to do anything else or you can build this tool that does like fishing for you. It's pretty cool to get resources and that's what I like to do. I like to maximize my amount of resources. I've noticed that I don't like wasting time in terms of going and visiting all these different places where I've set up camps. So the way that I do it is that I go back to my Minato, I believe is the name, the, the main camp in the game. Because after a while, it lets you set up Kakeruis as much as you want. And pretty much all the stats in the the base camp is like at 100. So you can place them anywhere. The way that I've done it was I set up all my items that I need for making food. Whether like that's um, pres like preser uh, preserving food, drying food, anything like that. I'll set them up so that I can make miso paste, I can make uh, fermented fish, I can make like dried fish, that kind of stuff, and dried meat and all that kind of stuff. I set that all up there. And then I'll set up like fishing places so that I can get fish. I set up like mining places as well, just so I all have that in one centralized area because I know I'm gonna go and visit there a lot. The game also allows you to set up a forge anywhere you want, permitted you have enough resources in terms of your dragon pits so make sure that you level those up. Um, but I like to keep that all in the Minato because I like to keep my world quite fresh, quite basic. I will set up forges in, in certain places if I'm fighting a boss just in case if I'm using a weapon and I'm like, oh, I need to change my weapon on the fly. You can only do that at Forges and it's the same with armor. Um, it's not a game like Wolong, which we'll be talking about after the break, where in Wolong, you can just switch your weapons and switch your armor on the fly. And I think the reason why EA and, and um, Megaforce did this was that you don't necessarily rely on going and dipping in and out of menus because this is predominantly an online game so you can't really rely on menus as such because the game doesn't stop when you're in a menu you can't really pause the game you can technically but you can't do much when you pause if that makes sense in Wolong because it's more reliant on single player play you can pause it in the menus and you don't need to necessarily worry about that as much um but yeah speaking about the forge let's talk about weapons um in this forge you have an insane skill tree for weapons, which I really do enjoy because it, it webs out a little bit and it goes back on itself. So for example, we certain weapons will have certain weapon affinities, they'll have certain elements attached to them, they'll have certain perks. If you, if you like a weapon and you like the skills that it has, but you feel like oh, it doesn't have as much attack or as much defense as I would like, you could basically find another weapon on the skill tree that connects to that weapon even if it is further back, because you can go back on yourself within the skill tree. It's beautiful. It is complicated though, but you can go back and basically apply the same skills that you had on your weaker weapon and apply them to your stronger weapon or vice versa. You could do whatever you want. And I really do enjoy that. It is a bit of a grind to get the weapons that you want because it's very dependent on which parts you have to hand. And a lot of the time, they're not the basic parts that you get from just simply defeating a kimono. They are the ones that you need to kind of hunt for, the ones that you get by attacking their weaknesses. And it's kind of also like Tokiden in the sense that if a part falls off, you can come and collect it. In Tokiden, they've kind of phrased it as like, you were sort of cleansing the part for use in weapons and stuff. But in this game, you just collect it, but it works the same way. You hold a button down, it collects the part. Takes some time, but you can be attacked in the middle of it. It is a beautiful system though. And I really do like it. And the weapons do change the aesthetics a lot. There's a lot of cool weapons in this game as well. You've got a great sword. You've got a scythe, which is similar to Jiaju's scythe in uh, Dynasty Warriors. The great sword is similar to, you know, Guan Ping's classic great sword. You got your sword, which is your standard sword. It kind of reminds me of Zhou Tai in Dynasty Warriors 6. Very reminiscent of that. You also have a cannon that you can use i don't really like using the cannon it's quite slow you've got like okuni's umbrella from samurai warriors it's a sick weapon really good 
you got a lot of speed, but you still deal as much damage as the sword. Another one that I use as well is the bow staff, which is, I think, the best weapon in the game because of the fact that it's three weapons. It's pretty cool. You press, I believe, R1, and that changes the weapons up for you. Also, the way it, it reacts with Kakerui's really well. For example, if you run into fire, the bow staff will turn into like Lubu's weapon from Dynasty Warriors 6, and your character will throw it at the kimono, which is fantastic. Or if you've built a platform for jumping, it will change it into a halberd and then you just smash the enemy. In addition to that, I think you can also turn it into like a massive hammer. It's pretty cool. It is, genuinely is pretty cool. There is also a massive hammer, kind of like, I can't remember his name, but it's basically weapons that you've seen before in Samurai Warriors and in Dynasty Warriors, which is cool. No, don't get me wrong, but it's very familiar. If you played those games, you'll know, you know how to operate them. I was hoping that we'd see more like Tokiden weapons in there as well, like the muskets and things like that. But um, considering the scale of the enemies, it is um, a lot different. Much like Tokiden before we get on the break, there are some things that I don't necessarily like about this game. It seems like all of the bosses or all of the major kimonos or the big ones, they're the same. They're just reskinned, which is kind of dumb. I really don't like that. They're basically the same. They'll have the same attack patterns. There'll just be different elements. So you'll get a rat and it's like, oh, this rat is a fungus rat. Or this rat is a poison rat. And I'm like, really? Are we really do or, or the lava back, which is the, the gorilla. You know, there is one variant of it that is an ice variant. And I'm like, this is the same boss, but it just gets a bit annoying because it adds to that level of repetition because it's like, it's the exact same boss. It's just the element is different. You don't really even need to change the way that you play. But especially when you're trying to get the weapons and the armor that you want, you'll be doing the same boss effectively three or four times, right? If you want to get a weapon set or an armor set, or it will be like, oh, you need a uh, tusk from the ice uh, boar. And then you also need the normal ones. So it's like you're doing the same battle twice, even though they're slightly different cosmetically and in terms of their elements. That is something that I'm not a fan of. In terms of the grinding, I don't mind it. I genuinely don't mind the grind in this game just because of the online multiplayer. If it didn't have that, or if you're playing solo, I can understand why this game would be infuriating to play. I'm happy with it because it has that online multiplayer. So yeah, I think that's really all I have to say about Wild Hearts. I really did enjoy the game. I will say this, in a few months time, this game may be forgotten about if EA and Omega Force don't really step up some things. There is still a, a few glitches in the game. I know when I got the game initially, it wouldn't let me put a beard on my character and it just crashed the game constantly. Um, that has since been patched, but there is a few things that I think, I think would sustain the game and sort of extend its lifetime a lot more. One of those things being adding in new kimono adding in the number of players that can join a lobby because i think at, at the moment it's three i would like it so that there's four that would be cool that might break the game in terms of balancing but i think it could be adjusted that's another thing i think balancing is a nice thing as well i think how it should be is that the more characters that you add the harder the battle is right i think it should that should be the case and then obviously if you're playing solo it should be slightly easier for solo players. That's how I think the game should be. But I think also with that big risk should come big reward. If you still want to incentivize online play, I think you should add more um, features and like just more rewards for online play. Like if you really want to do it that way, make the game a little bit easier for single player and make it a bit more difficult for online multiplayer and just adjust the rewards accordingly. I think that's a good way of doing it. I think as well, what they could do to sustain the game a lot more is just make online multiplayer free, um, no matter what platform you're playing. It's a good thing they've included crossplay, so you can play with Xbox players, you can play with um, PC players as well. That's fantastic. But yeah, I would like to see free play on here just because i think people would more likely continue to play the game if you put those features in there that's just my personal opinion because it was an incentive that i thought was great if that was actually going to be in there but yay you patched it why 
but yeah, other than that, I think it's a really good game. Is it a 10 out of 10? A lot of people are giving it 10 out of 10s. I don't give scores on Galp, so I think it is a great game. Is it a game to get day one? No. I'd say if you're into Monster Hunter, if you're into games like Tokiden, definitely get this game sometime if it is going on sale. Hopefully by then the game isn't completely dead in terms of online play, but this is something that I see myself doing like a game night, a Galp game night, and being like, guys, let's play the game together and we'll set up lobbies because that's what we used to do with Tokiden. I remember back in the day, we used to do this thing called the TK Day. We used to do this thing called the TK Day, where basically we had these community events and they were run by the community, supported by Koei, run by the community. And it wasn't just supported by Koei Europe, it was supported by Koei America, and even Koei Japan got in on it. And it was mainly a thing that we did for Tokiden. So I think we could still do the same. EA, maybe do something like that as well. You could revive the, the TK Day you could revive tk day i think that'd be really cool i would really like to see that return that level of community engagement return at koei tecmo mind you wild hearts is not published by koei tecmo so i don't really see them having the incentive to sort of promote a game that they're not really benefiting as much from at least in in europe and in america but i would still like to see that because i think that's what's going to sustain this game because we were still playing tokiden one way after tokiden one come out so but yeah we're gonna go on a little bit of an ad break and when we return we're gonna be talking about wolong fallen dynasty now it's a better time than ever to be an anime fan with crunchyroll that has the world's largest anime collection you can watch new episodes one hour after they air in japan enjoy access to unlimited ad free anime read hundreds of chapters across dozens of manga titles and save with exclusive crunchyroll store discount so if you guys go to crunchyroll.com forward slash kunai that's crunchyroll.com forward slash kunai for your 14 day free trial of crunchyroll premium service remember you guys we love crunchyroll we use them on kunai i personally love them i personally use them all the time we've been going to crunchyroll events for a long time long time sponsor of the podcast and you know what they are the best place to watch anime legally online with over thirty thousand episodes and at the moment if you're listening to this they've got the largest fall lineup in history for fall 2022 with over 40 simulcasting titles that is insane so join crunchyroll with our link crunchyroll.com forward slash kunai for 14 day free trial in addition to that you've got different perks with your premium service you can either go with your mega fan you can go with fan service or your mega fan for 12 months personally the biggest savings that you're going to make is if you do your mega fan option if you live in the uk that's only 60 pounds a year that's vat inclusive that's cheaper than any streaming service at the moment especially if you're into anime you got all your anime pretty much in one place that's no ads unlimited access to the Crunchyroll library new episodes one hour after they air in japan for your simulcasts access to your digital manga streaming on four devices at the same time as well as offline viewing you would not believe how many times offline viewing has saved me beyond the tube there's no wi-fi there's no 5g i'm like ah, oh, i want to watch anime boom i'm watching overlord i'm watching dr stone i'm watching naruto I'm watching dbz you've got it all on crunchyroll so that's crunchyroll.com forward slash kunai so that's crunchyroll.com forward slash k-u-n-a-i Back onto the episode. Are you a fan of anime and Japanese pop culture? I know I am. So why don't you get your asses down to Sugoi Mart? All right, that's sugoimart.com. Alternatively, you can use our link, getlifepodcast.com forward slash sugoi. That'll take you to our special link on Sugoi Mart. That is getlifepodcast.com forward slash S-U-G-O-I. And use our code G-A-L-P, that is G-A-L-P, for 15% off on everything on Sugoi Mart and you can use the code multiple times if you really love Sugoi Mart and you're like hell yeah I'm gonna go and purchase the best things that Japan has to offer food and drink beauty items collectibles toys and games you can actually buy Gunpla from Sugoi Mart as well as a lot of things for your home kitchen appliances bathroom bedroom stuff they've got these really lovely spy family campus notebooks i'm a big fan of stationery as you guys know and they've got that there as well there's some really cool stuff on here you can also purchase experience sets which is basically like kits to make matcha to make onigiri and they'll provide everything basically 
whatever you want sugoi mart has got it they've got a lot of really cool stuff from japan and as you guys know every sort of month or so they give us get back edge that we show off to you guys which i think is pretty cool so they've got really nice stuff included they also sell pokemon cards and a lot of genuinely hyped stuff what we want to do is that we want to find out the weirdest things on the Sugoi Mart website and get Sugoi Mart to send them to us. So Sugoi Mart, if you're listening, let's prepare that. Let's just get the weirdest stuff and send it my way. And we'll we'll talk about it on a episode of Umai. They've got some really, really nice stuff. If you want to get items from Japan quite easily, some really nice quirky items, then you can go to SugoiMart.com, use the code GALP for 15% off on your purchase they've got some really nice stuff whether you're an anime fan whether you're a fan of japanese culture or even if you're a fan of disney they've got a lot of disney items on there so experience japan from the comfort of your own home with sugoi mart use the code galp for 15 percent off thank you sugoi mart for sponsoring this episode of the podcast and back on to the episode okay welcome back and welcome back to gap we're talking about well long fallen dynasty this is another koei game but this time this one is published by koei tecmo developed by team ninja the same company that worked on dead or alive ninja gaiden as well as neo this is obviously a interesting game because it's based off of the romance of the three kingdoms uh, a book that is really well beloved by a lot of people i believe it's one of the great novels of china if i'm not mistaken it's also the book that dynasty warriors or dynasty warriors is based off one of the books or the book that well long fallen dynasty is based off is very interesting because it doesn't play like dynasty warriors it plays like neo it's a souls like game and in fact it's it's got people that have worked on bloodborne including masaki yamigawa who is the development producer on well long fallen dynasty it is a brand new ip for koei tecmo as you can imagine focusing on the three kingdoms story a new take on the three kingdoms story in fact because this game i'd say is not that historically accurate and i'm like what you're like what bish what what the hell are you talking about i think dynasty warriors is more historically accurate than this game and you're like surely bish the game that has you fight with kebabs yes uh, i do think dynasty warriors is more historically accurate in terms of a story only because this game has like monsters that you're fighting. It's very reminiscent of Dynasty Warriors 6 um, Strike Force in that sense. Only in that sense. But in a way, it's a very refined game. It does also remind me of Strike Force in a lot of other ways as well. In the fact that this game is not open world, which surprised me because I thought it was going to be. Considering that Koei Tecmo has worked on... Um, open world games before dynasty warriors 9 as, as a prime example so they've kind of already mapped out china you'd think that they would be able to use some of that um you know they might not be because you know it's different studio different way of game a different way of game different genre of, of game as well so the way that the game is is that it's structured into different parts of the map different chapters of the story um almost where you kind of go through the story in these little segments and they're mapped out for you you don't actually have a mini map you just have this sort of compass that guides you around where you need to go what direction you need to go in you're not told anything you are given storyline um and the storyline is quite interesting because i played the game and i thought wow okay there's zombies in this game and then it clicked in my head oh wow th this is the yellow turban rebellion of course there's gonna be zombies and you're like what what bitch what the hell because that might might make people think what the hell is this especially people that have never played or have ever experienced the romance of the three kingdoms in the yellow turban rebellion there were these soldiers that you couldn't kill and it just clicked in my head that they were probably undead i think that's what that was and i was like oh okay that makes sense that makes a lot of sense there is a lot of enemies that are kind of based off of chinese folklore and like fairy tales and things like that which is pretty cool especially the monsters and the weaponry the weaponry is very sort of refined the combat is fantastic one thing i don't like about this game because it is like a souls like game i'm not used to the difficulty genuinely the game has this morale system where as you fight more and as you take hits more this morale goes up or down so if you die your morale gets set back to in some cases zero 
or one or two or whatever depending on how many base flags you find on the map and then after you, i think once you find all of them um it sets it up so it will hit a max rank of 10 so if you die it won't go back to zero it'll just go back to 10 which makes sense it's really cool at these little base flags you can do everything that you need to do in terms of buying selling equipment leveling up your character the leveling up system is quite interesting it's kind of like a star system so you can level up certain elements that sort of affect your your base stats your attack your defense and things like that and then you can set up your skills based on that so there's a skill tree for each um sort of affinity i don't know how to explain it it's very complex but it is quite a nice system as well because you can mix and match depending because i'm new to this sort of game i want to make sure that i have enough hp so that i'm comfortable in terms of going into a fight knowing that i i'm not gonna die but the game kind of doesn't care about that you can max up your hp as much as you want i sort of leveled up from the first battle Zhang Liang. um from the yellow tabs and rebellion so that's basically your tutorial effectively but that the game is not going to give you a tutorial but that's like your first sort of baby's first fight that kind of thing it was so difficult like i was fighting this character for like 15 i don't want to say i don't i really want to say it 15 hours i spent on that first sort of tutorial world um 15 hours yeah because i was gr i was grinding for 15 hours because i thought well I can't defeat him. I'm going to grind the shit out of that town or whatever and make sure that I'm leveled enough. The game does not care if you're over leveled. The game doesn't care if you're under leveled because it's about your reaction time. It's about dodging and rolling, which I don't really play these kind of games at all. So I don't know that. So I went into this game. I played the demo, mind you, but I didn't defeat the boss in the demo. So yeah, regardless. So I didn't know about this whole dodging mechanic the game gives you little hints here and there but i was like oh, why the fuck should i care about dodging and rolling because as a dynasty warriors player you can't dodge or roll i believe in dynasty warriors 6 you could can't believe i'm comparing this game to dynasty warriors 6 but you could do that in dynasty warriors 6 um you can also block in this game does not do shit the blocking is more effective in dynasty warriors than it is in world on because the game really rewards you for dodging you can do if you do like perfect dodges and stuff you can like counter attack and like that's cool the animations are great stealth is fantastic but the level of difficulty is, is what annoys me i will say this the game is sort of gentle to some new players i think koei is very aware that there will be players in this game who are coming from a game like dynasty warriors because of this is a new sort of telling of the romance of the three kingdom story that i think a lot of people would enjoy you know and the combat is you know at least when you're fighting npcs and fighting soldiers it's fantastic it's especially as a dynasty warriors player you can get used to that sort of combat very very easily it's incredibly simple it's just the perfect dodges is just incredibly difficult to pull off especially if you have very slow reaction times it is incredibly difficult to pull off i know that there's been this sort of debate online on whether or not games like this should have a difficulty setting like easy or hard or or whatever for newer players this game doesn't have that and i'm not going to get into that discussion but i think it's very accommodating to newer players and this is something that i think maybe some reviewers may have not noticed but i noticed it because i'm really bad at this game at least with Zhang liang and with some other bosses the more you play the game the easier it gets and that's not because you start to learn the patterns it's because the game gradually gets easier in terms of boss battles at least how so bish how how do you consider this how did you notice this basically when i was fighting Zhang liang his morale initially was at level 20 and i was like yo the fuck level 20 morale it boosts your morale to match him mind you in the battle at least so that's a good thing but his morale was at level 20 at least and then after getting murked time after time after time after time my morale in the battle is still 20 but his has dropped to 10 and then the more i attack him it drops so it'll go to eight it'll go to seven and then the second half of the battle will begin so the game does make it slightly easier it's still very difficult don't don't get me wrong the game is very reliant on the dodging and rolling and perfect dodge mechanics and just timing your attacks as well you can't brute force your way in which i would have liked you know dynasty warriors makes you feel like such a badass 
Like, it makes you feel like you're the king of the world, you know? There is that level of difficulty in a game like Dynasty Warriors, but for the most part, you are a beast. You know, you, you're causing damage left, right, and center, right? In this game, I felt so humiliated every time I lost. And the game, like, obviously, I don't know how to explain it. The game takes away key, um, key which you use to, like, level up your stats. The game removes that. Every time you die, they don't... They don't give you with a monetary a penalty so you don't lose money but you lose key and obviously you need key to level up it actively makes things harder for you every time you die so it's like it's it's telling you you can't die you better get good at this game and that's hard for me i think that's hard for a lot of players and i think this is the issue that a lot of the older tk family members people who grew up with games like dynasty warriors samurai warriors even ninja gaiden or a game like hockey den or even doa i think a lot of the OG uh, TK family members, at least from when I'm speaking to them, are frustrated. Why? Because it's like, we know that we're not stupid. We know that this is the type of game that sells more recently, you know, with Demon Souls, Dark Souls, even Neo was very popular. And Koei knows that as well. And obviously Koei is going to pursue games like that because it's more of a AAA title. It's going to make more money. They can invest more money into development as well. And you know, it's great. It's a good thing because, you know, we've seen Koei invest quite a lot into this. The game looks beautiful. Combat is fantastic. Like I mentioned, I can't fault the games on those points. Even the fact that the game has got multiple language options. The game has three dubs, English, Chinese, and Japanese, which is fantastic. We need more of that. But it also has more subtitles. So it has English. I think it has French, German, Italian, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese. I think it's traditional and simplified Chinese, Japanese and Korean. I think there's some additional languages as well. I can't remember, but it's very nice that they're accommodating all of this, but they can only do it because they know that this game is going to make a lot of money and it's going to have a lot of investment, which makes sense. You know, if you go into a game like Samurai Warriors 5, the only options that you get is like English and Japanese, and that's it. Even in terms of voice option, all you're going to get is Japanese. So it's interesting that they've put a lot of money into making sure that this game is accessible to a lot of regions, which is great because they know they're going to make money off it. But my main point about this was a lot of the TK family members feel a little bit left out, a little bit like, hey, we know that this game is going to make a lot of money for Koei, and that's fantastic. But are we still going to see classics or are we going to see Koei shift into a more triple A um, developer that only makes games like this because this is not everyone's cup of tea i enjoyed it to a certain degree but i don't like games that are sort of obscure like i i would like to know how to play a game right which was interesting because the demo told you how to play the game better than the actual game told you how to play the game if that makes sense you're introduced to this game not knowing what to do not knowing where to go and it's food feeds you but in a very horrible way it's like it's spoon feeding you but it's putting all the food on the floor and it makes you have to go and lick it up from the floor it does that and it's, it's humiliating in a way because it's like i don't want to spend 15 hours on one boss fight and i know people are gonna laugh at me because they're like bitch you suck which is true i do suck at these kind of games this is not my kind of game like give me atelier any day or give me a dynasty warriors game any day or or wild hearts even and to be fair with you i do prefer wild hearts over this game but that's because that's the type of game i enjoy this game is not made for me and that's fine and so i'm not really gonna be harsh on the game because it's fantastic it's a fantastic game it's a beautiful game koei really knows how to make a good game when they want to oh i shouldn't have said that but yeah koei knows how to make a good game and they've proved themselves with other games in the past but it it leaves the tk family and i mention it as tk family because the community at the moment is sort of very divided you know i, I think a lot of us don't really talk as much anymore and having conversations with a lot of people it's it feels as though we don't get as much community reach out and we don't get as much community engagement as we used to, you know, back in the day when Chin was there. We're talking about 10 plus years ago. But yeah, it doesn't seem that there's this sort of generated hype for Koei games anymore. And I think it's probably because of the type of game is changing. Koei in more recent years have decided we'll focus our attention on spin-offs. We'll focus our attention on new IP. And we're starting to forget about the IP that have made Koei who they are, have made Tecmo who they are as well. We haven't gotten a new Ninja Gaiden game. Yes, we got Ninja Gaiden HD collection. We haven't gotten a new Ninja Gaiden game since Razor's Edge. Actually, that's a lie. We did get uh, Yaiba, but no one likes to talk about Ninja Gaiden Yaiba because it wasn't that good. And even the company that developed it, Spark Entertainment or whatever, they don't exist anymore. I do want to see a little bit of a return to form from 
Huawei. I do want to see them focusing on older IPs as well. And that's the important thing as well, because I do like this attention to detail. I do like this craftsmanship that we've seen with Wolong, because you can tell everything looks fucking beautiful in the game. Like the weapons, the animation, the overall atmosphere. The game made me feel very creeped out. And I love that because I talk about it on Kunai a lot in terms of anime, that soundtracks are very important. And there's this tense music that plays in the background, especially as you edge closer to an enemy. You know, if you want to do a stealth attack or if you're close to a boss or that kind of thing, it's beautiful. It's actually genuine. Like I felt creeped out and that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. I like it when games make me feel emotions, you know, as much as people like to think that, oh, I'm a Dynasty Warriors player and all I do is uh, mash buttons. I was mashing buttons in this game. It does not work out for you. There is a level of thinking that you need to do. You can't just turn off your brain and play this game. Some people will be able to do that because they're experienced players at this game. But if you are someone who's been playing Dynasty Warriors for years on end and you don't play Souls-like games, then this isn't a game for you. But if you're someone who plays games like Elden Ring, who plays games like uh, the Souls series or Bloodborne or any one of those kinds of games, you're going to love this game. Genuinely. It doesn't have an open world. It is kind of confined to chapters and these little maps. Um, And there is online multiplayer in terms of asking other people to assist. The game is mainly designed for single player play. And you can still recruit other people within the sort of Romance of Three Kingdoms-esque world. Zhao Yun, Guan Yu. There's, There's a lot of characters that you can kind of recruit, which I think is pretty cool as well. And the character designs are beautiful. And the character creation screen is also great. It Uh, That's another thing. When you're making a character, it's basically the same character creator that you get in Wild Hearts. And I do know that this is a character creator that kind of came from Neo series and it made its way over and it's fantastic. The game engine it's running, it's fantastic. Like I said, this game is not for everyone. Certainly it wasn't for me, but I can't diss the game for it. I can't hate on this game because I didn't personally like it. I can't hate on this game because the game wasn't intended for me, right? I do think if you are experienced or even if you're not experienced but you want to play this game go and play it if you have an xbox actually decide for yourself if you have an xbox and if you've got game pass this game is on game pass so download it on game pass play it if it's for you great if it's not don't need to play it that's just it like genuinely try before you buy effectively you could do that that's pretty cool obviously playstation players don't get that option but if you have xbox game pass download it on game pass play it i've been playing it on xbox Kobe did in fact give me a code for it even though I have game pass but um I do appreciate it because my game pass was running out (laughs) and I haven't renewed it um but yeah like I said I think people who are coming from Dynasty Warriors, Samurai Warriors, Warriors Orochi this might not be a game for you unless you've played games like uh, Dark Souls, Demon Souls those games if you've played them if you love those games if you love a challenge yeah you'd love this game like i mentioned and this is something that i'm going to end it off with it wasn't a game for me because it was such a challenging game i don't want to spend 15 hours figuring out how to defeat a boss and i don't want to be dodging and and jumping everywhere and this game does have some incredible combat when it's with the npcs and when it's with soldiers and with the zombies and with like the animals and stuff the combat is really solid i would kind of like to see something like that i i think i'm gonna anger a lot of people I would kind of love to see something like that with like a Dynasty Warriors game. Like if we got a new Dynasty Warriors Strike Force made like this game. Oh, I would love that. Or if we saw a Dynasty Warriors game with this style of combat, but just a lot more enemies, that would be fucking fantastic. It wouldn't necessarily be a Dynasty Warriors game, but it would still be good. Um, Regardless, regardless, I think that's it. I, I don't think I can talk more about this game. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you to our sponsors, Crunchyroll, to Goima, thanks to, to Koei Tecmo, and thanks to EA for providing us codes for these games. And like I mentioned, if you want to try out Wolong, it's on Game Pass. Additionally, you can purchase it on the PlayStation 5, PS4, Xbox One, and on the PC. It's also on the Xbox series of consoles. And Wild Hearts, you can buy it on PC, PS5, and the Xbox series of consoles as well. Hope you guys enjoy this episode of the podcast. Um, We will be doing more episodes. Mind you, I have been 
quite ill, so I haven't been doing any episodes recently. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this episode of Gap. We'll be doing an episode ahead of Final Fantasy 16. We're going to be talking about Final Fantasy 7 Remake, as well as the importance of games like that and Crisis Core as well. So be on the lookout for that. Anyway, bye.